chapter 5, section 4, ADEPT. We're going to look at a different kind of special trinomial, specifically the type that deal with, well, a difference of squares. And before I do any definitions for you, I'm just going to work through an example, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about right away. If I have a product of two binomials, and I just want to multiply them, remember we use distributive law, but in this case, the special case, we call it FOIL. So first, outside inside last. So that gives me x squared minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. Combining like terms, these x's in the middle, they cancel out because they are equal and opposite in sign. So I'm left with x squared minus 9. And by looking at this, perhaps you can see what I mean by a difference of squares. So x squared is a perfect square. The number 9 is a perfect square, but this minus sign in front of it, well, when you're subtracting, that says difference. So I have a difference of two perfect squares. Why did that happen? Well, it happened because these two terms canceled out. Well, why did they cancel out? Well, the 3 was repeated, but 1 was positive, 1 was negative. So let's see if that pattern continues. I have x plus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, if I multiply it out, I get a minus 5x plus 5x in the middle. Minus 25. So those cancel. And again, I'm left with just a difference of two squares, x squared and 25. Next one, same thing. I get 9x squared minus 6x plus 6x minus 4. The 6x is cancel, and I'm left with 9x squared minus 4. I think we can generalize this. So if we have a product of two binomials of the form a plus b times a minus b, well, you can multiply it out, but you're going to get some cancellations. So that in the end, you're left with a squared minus b squared. So you just take this number and square it, this number and square it, and take the difference. The next set of exercises asks us to quickly multiply without using FOIL. Okay. Now we can do this because we have uh, two binomials that are almost the same, but the only difference is the sign in the middle. So if I multiplied it out the long way, uh, the two terms in the middle would just cancel out. Right. Well, I'm going to skip that process, and I get x squared minus 64. Okay, because those the minus 8x and the 8x in the middle are going to cancel because these signs are opposing. This one's going to give me x squared minus 100. This one gives 4x squared minus 1. This one, 16 x squared minus 49. Okay. And if you're not too comfortable with this, feel free, just foil it out. This one, ooh, I'm going to get x to the fourth minus 144. This one, oof, getting uglier, but again, it follows the same pattern. Here I will have x, y, all squared minus 9x squared. Of course, I can square both of these as I squared these individually. So you could also write it as x squared, y squared, minus 9x squared. So just some quick multiplication. OK, well, multiplying, well that's easy. Going the other way, requiring us to factor, that's a little bit more complicated. Right? So x squared minus 144. Well, I have a difference of squares. 144 is a perfect square, and x squared is a perfect square. And we know that anything of this form can be broken down like so. And you can change the order. You could write a minus b, a plus b. That part doesn't matter. Okay. So here, the a is obviously x. And the b, that would be the square root of 144. So very quickly, 
I get x plus 12, x minus 12. And of course, you can always check by foiling it out again. Next one, I have something squared minus something squared. This time, I'll actually show it explicitly as a difference of squares. So this one we already see is a square, but I'll show the last term written as a perfect square. So it's like this xy is the a, and the 5 is the b. Right? So I can factor it very quickly. I get xy plus 5 x, y, minus 5. Okay. Last one. x to the 6th minus 121. Well, 121 is a perfect square. And you may think, well, that's not a perfect square because that exponent is a 6. Well, it is a perfect square because remember, x to the 6th could be written as x cubed squared. And this is minus 11 squared, just to show that. So this is a perfect square. And it's like this is the A, that's the B. So factoring this quickly gives x cubed plus 11, x cubed minus 11. And we're done. Now let's do a few more. Okay. Well, we've got more stuff going on, so let's just check to see if there's no GCF I can pull out first. Well, no, nope, there isn't one. <laughs> but both terms in here are perfect squares, and I have a difference. Okay, Once you get good at these, you can actually factor them immediately. But I'm going to show the, inst the intermediate step. I'm going to actually write them specifically as a difference of two perfect squares so that you can see where my A and B will come from. Okay. Again, this step is not necessary when you get comfortable in the end. And there we go. Okay, so this factors as a plus b, a minus b. Huh. That was easy. Uh, the next one, okay, looks like it's in reverse order, but that doesn't matter. This is still 8 squared minus y squared. It's a difference of perfect squares. The 8 is like my a, and just the y is the b. Not the y squared, just the y. So I would get 8 plus y, or, sorry, and 8 minus y. Okay? That's one way of writing it, but remember, since these are both positive, I could write that as y plus 8. That's the same thing. Okay? However, 8 minus y, I can't write that as y minus 8, okay? because then I'd be changing the signs. Right? I'd say negative y plus 8. Okay? So I'll write y plus 8 and for this one, I'm just going to factor out a negative 1, and I'm going to pull it out completely. I'm going to put it right there. Therefore, all these signs are going to change. This becomes positive. This becomes negative. Okay? Why am I doing all this? It's just to show you that there are different ways of writing the same thing. If you stopped here, that's totally fine. Okay? But if you wanted to change the order, play around with the signs, both of these are perfectly okay. All right. Looks like I have a difference of squares. Okay, and I'll see if I can write it as such. This would be 7xy all squared minus 2t all squared. All right. So this stuff is that's my a. That's my b. So I get a plus b a minus b. And there we go. So that, in a nutshell, 
factoring a difference of squares.